Hello, everyone. RPG Kingdom Kid here, back with some more Psychopaths Mandatory Happiness. In the previous video, we started off our new journey with um, uh, Surugi, and now we are back at this. This is basically the place where everything basically is always the splitting point of stuff. So, yeah. But anyway, we for this one we are gonna join a Connie's oh. rescue team. And I know for sure that we can fast forward this one. I believe I pick up a mail plate and then assault. Yep. All stuff that we've done. Ba 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 ba. We advance. Ba I will guard with the metal plate. Look to Sunyori, the fire extinguisher over there. Okay, Kagari, get it. Got it. Since Shu was close to it, he rushed ahead and snatched it. Masa and I held up our metal plates, guarding ourselves against the approaching captors. You know how to use it, right? I'm an enforcer, aren't I? That doesn't instill confidence. Even though his hands trembled, one of the stupid kids managed to light his match. He lit a Molotov and flung towards us. What kind of throw is that? Was he drunk? Still, he somehow managed to not hit any of the other captors. It flew past our heads and landed between us, creating a wall of fire. Damn it! Watching the fire grow, the captors shook in fear. Their faces become pale, their bodies stiffening. This guy seemed to be a little smarter than the group before. Fuck you, brace yourself. Shu poked the poked the head fire extinguisher's nozzles between Masa and my mail plate. Put out the fire. The kids looked like they were about to shit their pants. Alright, let's end this. Yeah. Masa runs forward by slamming the captors one by one. To safely to safely secure them, that's why. Don't go overboard, please. Okay? Don't tell me. Tell that to my fist. It took a little longer than I thought, but soon we knocked them all out cold. Keep it going. Okay, so for this one, we need to make another save. Save C. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm actually gonna do the the quote unquote second time you want to do this, which is just leads to a bad end. So I figure that's gonna be shorter. So I'm just gonna do that now. Just try to force your way through. I don't have time to deal with you punks. I charged head on. Tsurugi, what the hell? Woohoo, let's end this. Kagari, shit. Not the rest of you too. The 
Captors were unexpectedly re resilient, but they didn't anticipate we'd pound on them with full force, even though they had hostages. Thanks to our swift actions, they couldn't use any of their Molotovs, and they didn't try to either. Seemed Heaven's Gate didn't screw up their heads too much after all. At any rate, we need to end this pr pronto. If we let it drag on, the criminal might hear all the commotion. Keep it down. We knocked the wind out of those punks, but behind them another captor stood, clutching something above his head. I looked up and saw... Pipe bomb? Pipe bomb? I dashed toward him just as he threw it. All I could focus on was the handmade weapon of death coming right at me. I leapt forward, grabbing it with both hands, then dived onto the ground. Did I make it in time? Sarugi! Taku! Sarugi! I wanted to reply with my usual joking, fatitious self, but it was impossible. No words come out. Only my breath and moans could escape as blood spilled. The oh, fuck? Miss Kujitaki shook me, her lips pressed, her calm demeanor slowly fading. Then she reached for my hands, grabbing whatever was left of them. Holy damn! Uh, Sarugi. Behind our gummy was pounding on the pipe bomb perp. He, he sure could fight. What moves he had. Such a badass. Sarugi. Sarugi. Rugi, you fool. I ordered you to stay alive. Yeah, that's gonna be a little problem, Masa. <laughs> yeah, that was true. It's probably a fool. Guess this is it. At least I made it in time. At least everybody was safe. But I still have something I wish I could do. Yukari. Yukari. Sorry, I can't find you anymore. Seemed like I didn't make it in time, after all. Bad end! You suck! <laughs> okay. I guess I need that for that, uh, for that picture there. Or event. Alright, that was easy. That was also very short, too, so... Alright, for realsies this time. Stun, stun grenade. This is all stuff we've done before, so it's fine. Just keep going. Just keep going. Point to Dominator. Mention how I was like, well, you shouldn't unpack because we're probably going to be back in the city within like a week or two. Snemori, this 
And now, yep, Genoza. Suruki. Suruki. Blink, 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 blink. Not taking it. Reject her advice. Oh, hey, I get my promotion here. Sweet. Spider was great. That's what I thought as sweat ran down my skin. I felt like I could take on as many sparring robots that were available. No, I wasn't planning on destroying anything or doing something dangerous just to blow off steam. This was just training. After all, any investigation could get physical. It's halfway done with the training. And halfway done with clean, cleaning my mi clearing my mind. <laughs> And so I ended up spending up my off day sparring with robots in the training room. Solely for the sake of sweating. Or maybe I was just lying to myself. Why was I sweating to try to make myself feel better? I finished reading all the info I could find on Yukari. And also the cyborg's analysis was taking quite some time. Without receiving any news about the analysis this morning, I had f I have been feeling a bit stressed. So maybe I just need to blow off some steam, sweating out my stress. Working out helped me drown out all the life's noises. Dodge the robot's right hook and land a solid uppercut to its chin. I wanted to connect more hits, but in my frustrated state, my stance was poor and the robot managed to rust me. Smashed against my ribs, put me off balance. Then I then swung its legs at me, so I ducked and grabbed its other leg. After bringing it down, I mounted it, hitting it several times until it stopped moving. Yeah, the Inspector Surugi. Masa, Masa. No, just call me by my name. So, Surugi. Looks like you've been working all on those muscles. Yeah, ma. Feel kind of embarrassed. Kind of like if my dad had just walked in on me in the middle of something. Masturbating. Even now, as an inspector, I didn't feel any different. And I didn't plan on changing either. Masa. Masaoka Tama, Tamamui would always be my senior who I'd look up to. I didn't feel like I was better than him or anything like that. Masa was old enough to be my dad. I would always be the experienced veteran. That never changed. Oh, great. I'm just thinking, like, great. All, all like the next things are not going to be able to be fast forward because he's an inspector, so it's totally different. Exactly because of that, I felt embarrassed. How about to sweat off the way? Did really well. Robot's no match for you. Stand with his feet firmly on the ground. Masa looked like a martial artist from the past. With that sense of stability and low center of gravity. And it had nothing to do with his left cybernized arm. I'd heard that Masa was known for his fighting prowess. Back in the days when there were many physical detectives, he was a warrior with countless fights on his belt. You still have energy left. Have a match with this old timer. Should be interesting. Talk about sparring. Can't Feel like you put in the good day's work after finding a droid. You have a strong body, and you're also a daring kid. I'm sure if Robot can satisfy a man like you. Gami's just the same. Sugi, you're up there with him too. No, but... I was a little hesitant. It's true that I was fit. Masa was strong too, but I was heavier due to my training, and taller as well. First glance, it seemed like I had a better shot at winning. 
I made a mistake, I could prove this disastrous, but... What else is there to worry about? Are you scared of finding an actual human? No. I was only looking out for him. At least that's what I thought. With my weight on full tackle would be tough to handle. Given that experienced former detective. But since he had such a challenge, I wasn't planning on backing down. Yeah, oh, I'll do it. Heard you're strong, Masa. I just have wisdom from my age. Doesn't matter that I'm wearing this martial arts uniform, does it? Even once saying that, I'm in my training wear, and I'm not wearing a top. Doesn't matter. I heard that Masa practiced judo, just like in any other fight. Your opponent's clothed in judo, and you practice grappling techniques based on that fact. If one's clothes is caught, there's no escape. Of course, there's numerous moves in wrestling that follow that same strategy. But I wasn't wearing clothes that could be grabbed. My train wear was the compression type, fitted my body. His clothes grabbing advantage as a part practitioner of judo ha had all but vanished. Grappling and hidden joints is allowed. The match ends when someone taps out. In the back of the head, spine, and between the cheeks is not allowed. That's fine. Now let's give it all we got. Both of us put our fingers less gloves on. All right, let's do this. It ended when I was sent flying. Didn't even know what had hit me. What happened? Was it a one-armed shoulder throw or a large outer wheel? Honestly, I had no idea. My tackle, my pride and joy of all my attacks have been dodged, and his thick metal arm stopped me in my tracks. Then I realized it. Masa's fighting strategy resolved around his prosthetic arm, but the next th thing I knew, I was finished. Didn't expect his real arm to reach out and grab me. Did he grab onto my shirt? Of course not. But, but my neck and arm pit and anywhere else my body was completely under the gaps. When I came to, I found myself gazing at the ceiling. My body lying stiff on the floor in the training room. <laughs> The impact forced my breath to shout out from my mouth. This was it. I definitely had lost. For a fence, he utilized the cybernetic arm like an iron wall. Using his flesh arm, he grabbed onto me and threw me down with the help of his powerful other arm. What a battle tactic. Up until now, I had never faced a latent criminal with a cybernized arm. I felt ashamed for myself for assuming that I had the advantage because my clothes couldn't be grabbed. Cybernetic's arm was truly a part of Masa. He had undoubtedly used it to his fullest potential. One point for me. Once the rules are different, at this rate I'll put you in a hole. What do you think? No, I, I lost. I lost. Not only with my was my vision blurry, but I was unable to move after being thrown on the floor. The effects of that impact continued to linger. When I tried to get up, I had to stagger to my feet. It was like I had received a one-hit KO. Knockout. Excuse me, I abbreviated it. It was a crushing defeat, or actually, to my surprise, it felt like a huge weight had been lifted from my shoulders. Being thrown onto the floor by Masa and feeling a bit out of sorts brought me to a greater rush than sparring with a robot. When I was sparring with the robots, I still had thought about those things. Yukari and the cyborg. But now I knew better. See, that impact just now blew away everything and cleared things up for me. You think you lost because you hesitated? 
Look here, your movements are too stiff. You won't be able to keep up with Kagami, but if you fight Kagari, you'd probably be able to keep up. I mean, I was fine when we'd done our hangouts together. No matter what, always give it everything you've got. And try to be fluid, so you're able to change and make adjustments on the go. Oh. Oh, your face looks a lot less tense. Seems stressed when you were sparring with the robot. Well, now you seem more at ease. Finally, there's that focus. Yes, sorry, Masa. But if you're willing to... Sure, one more match. And I'm on the floor again. Fuck. Before that, I'd like to wear a Juno uniform, too. Oh. Oh. Masa, please teach me your style of judo. I don't know much, so... So no matter how much I try, I won't be able to win. Then why do it, you little shit? I see. Alright. You know that tempering a sword quickly makes a dull blade, right? Well, at least I can try. Exactly. I tried doing what I could. This and that. The moves he had just done as well. As I bowed, I thanked him f deeply from the bottom of my heart. Oh, come on, uh, get rid of that formalities. Oh, That's right. Always try and do what you can, just as you said. I want to learn judo well. I won't use my full strength, but still not going to be easy. Hey, a little shit. <sighs> I don't want anything else. That's a good answer. Alright, prepare yourself. You have a long night of practice ahead of you. For today, we'll cover all moves for the first degree black belt. Or, actually, the second degree, too. Give me everything you got, Tsurugi. Yes. I'll do it. I will. If I only learn a little, I'll do my best to make myself better. Work it, baby, it makes us stronger. Again and again. I'd always be all in for Yukari, for sparring, for everything else I had to do. Man of stone. Work it, makes us do it better. This method makes us stronger. Don't keep going until I... Ah! Takuma Sarugi. So, there's only one tip left. One tip left, is there? Let me actually double check to be sure. I need you right now. Yes, there's that one. During his time as an enforcer, the crime officials he dropped below that of latent criminals, making him the first member of in the history of the Public Safety Bureau CID to successfully rehabilitate. In addition, he showed an aptitude to become an inspector and was promoted due to the rare circumstances. His flexibility and comp compassionate na nature was, an overpower was overpowering that it may have contributed to his improved cycle pass. Yep, all I have left is that one tip. And then there's no more tips! Alright guys, that is going to do it for this part of Let's Play Psycho Pass Mandatory Happiness. In the next part, there's probably going to be a lot of stuff because now, even though some things are going to be very similar, they're going to be different because he's now, now an inspector. So I'm just going to like skip through some of the stuff that seem like, like oh, well, we read this before because they're all like the, the people, you know, like with the kids uh, coming to the ships and everything like that. I'm just going to skip that. Uh, skip probably everything. Yeah, you know. Well, we'll see. I'll make it work. So, yeah. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked the video, please give that like button a click. Comment down below what you like about the video, what you didn't like about the video. And let me know. How do you think how do you think about uh Surugi's, uh promotion? That's what it's called. How do you feel about his promotion? I think it's good. So yeah. And as always guys, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a beat and subscribe to my main channel too. That's in the description below. As well as follow me on Twitter, both my main Twitter. Hmm. RPG Kingdom Kid Twitter are in there too. 
I want to thank you all so much for watching once again. And I'll see you all next time.